Hello also welcome to the today's tutorial. So today we will try to solve the problem which we were facing before and we will add the AIs uh, like if time persists. So let's start with the tutorial. So previously when we were playing the game I think when we were you know pressing the right button it was equipping the score but it was not zooming in by default like when you are equipping the weapon so like some default value should be there right so that was not there and when we were unequipping the weapon it was not resetting the FOV value so the field of view was uh, the default one so we will resolve that so let's search for the code go to the amp on base and in the equip weapon when we are equipping it what we can do uh, this let me copy and by default like uh, we can do inside the set weapon equip state if is equipped is true so if we are equipping the weapon then we will go here else okay so if we are equipping the people what, uh, what we will do camera component dot fov field of view is equals to uh, so by default it is 90 and if we will break it down uh, so it will zoom in so uh, let's make it 75 and camera component dot field of view is equals to 90 and these are the constant values so it will be a good idea if we will expose this value to the blueprint side so what I will do go to the uh, header file in the public control D I'm just uh, duplicating and uh, marking it default default FOV which is 90 equipped weapon FOV which we are keeping 75 right so we will replace that And this is the default FOV when we are not equipping the weapon and by default it will be remain 90 so uh, there will not be an issue and if we want to synchronize everything like when we are equipping the vehicle uh, we want to set a default value so in the begin play we can set that too or we can set it here and this should do the task so this is the first thing which I wanted to do and there is one more let me check e yep there was one more so let me check uh, let's try if our code is running fine or not control B press G okay let's try pressing right see it is giving us some zooming uh, effect and I am able to zoom in and zoom out. This is working fine. This is one more issue. As soon as you will zoom in, it is kind of blurry. If we are, if you are not unable, uh, if you are unable to get that, let me uh, tweak that value. Uh, let me go to the default pawn, and we have exposed one value called max constant. So let's make it three. Now try it. So as soon as we are zooming in it is kind of blurry so to resolve that issue what we will do we will search for the post process volume in the detail uh, this should be a value which must be modified in the modified value check for the focal distance and uncheck it now try it see now it is pretty clear okay and okay now uh, the code which we have put it, it is working fine okay next thing is uh, we want to add the NPC inside our project right now uh, we haven't added any character to it like we, we need some characters to uh, like which will be hanging around here and there so we will do that so open the epic give me a second 
and the character name uh, I, I will use this adventurous character it is solidly free if you will check in the epic library you can uh, search it in the market play it is free so that's why I'm using it and uh, it is like uh, I'm planning to have the multi multiple type of AIs so this is one of the type which we will add and th this is just the general AIs which will be uh, roaming around will check the areas so add the project and I have uh, project name is hitman this one okay it's done let's check man demo mesh full yep it is there we will use the full one uh, maybe this one sk underscore man underscore full so what we will do uh, I will create one class so let me go to the uh, rider inside the games source core and here I will create the AI first I will create the folder AIs inside this I will copy paste these two uh, or we can do uh, like Unreal class it will be the type of character and I will name it as AI base M A I base press enter mm. okay we can close this and what else do we want I don't think we need anything here let's go back here and compile uh, so I can uh, create one blueprint class of it it is done in the core uh, I will create one more folder called AIs and I will create that character MAI base BP underscore AI base so we can choose our character here so we don't want pawn base we just want the AI base uh, in the man texture smash full I think this is what we are looking for uh, we can use any of them uh, this will be good so let me use that uh, do we need anything else I don't think we can also set this value from the C++ but right time uh, like we will do it fast as we already know the drill and rotation it is along Z okay I think it's minus 87 or 89 something like that but sh this should uh, do the task okay uh, I do think that we have animations for it if I'm not wrong so let me check man materials metal texture demo animations yes we do have so we can create the classes from it so what we will do uh, like we don't have any animation class for it so let's do that like animation class is not there so what we will do So we will create one anime instance for it because in the animation class the parent class is the anime instance so we will create that first so go to the C++ folder inside the hitman core we have AIs so here uh, I will create that class anime instance anime instance click next MAI anime instance missions it shouldn't take long okay uh, just remove these extra uh, folder path else it will give you an error it did so <laughs> if you compile it it will be removed so in the anime instance uh, we have to, uh, we will create two f 
variable called speed because uh, like we will just create one blend space will will which will be dependent on the speed so and we will drive the speed value from the uh, pawn only so let's do that in public uh, we will declare two variables so you property I don't think it will be edit way because I don't want to edit it but uh, okay and blueprint read write we can do that and it will be float speed do we want anything else no and let's override some uh, functions so alt enter override members so I think update we have tick or uh, tick equivalent right Uh, I think it's update if I'm not wrong so net let's check for native update native update animation yeah that will work press ok and it will do the task and it will not be public it will be protected plus alt enter then a definition and this is it uh, okay so first I will get okay let's create one more variable called owned character it will not be public if I'm not wrong so private private let me okay so it will be the type of a as it oh sorry m pawn base yep uh, I think it will be a pawn right no it will be the character my bad control Z so it will be a type of character and it will be a type of M A I base so M A I base and owned character owner character will be the correct value I guess uh, so owned owner character uh, if owner character is true if not true owner character is equals to cast a a i m a i base and try get pawn owner this will do the trick and if it is true then we already have the character uh, what I will do I will get the character moment component like if we will check in the AI base we already have like if you have the parent class character then you already have this component called character moment component so we will get that so on a character dot get character moment dot we want velocity dot size okay as soon as I press S, uh, tab it has already uh, it already included this so make sure that you have that header file or else it will throw you an error just to make sure I will put one more check if this is also true because it might be a possibility that it will throw you some uh, null null error so it is always a good idea to have the null checks expression result not used yes sorry I have to save this value to speed so this should go away okay this is good so our instance is good I don't think we need anything else or uh, just to have okay we can also do one thing like in the begin play we can do this but uh, as we already uh, done this code so it will uh, do the trick I don't think we need anything extra here let me think nope nope okay so let me add let's head back to the unreal blueprint one and can let me compile control B okay it's done in the mesh 
okay first we have to create the blueprint one so what we will do in the core in AI's animations uh, animation blueprint okay here uh, first we have to check for what skeleton we do want to use that we will use UE4 mannequin skeleton because this came under uh, the asset which we have included today so let's check this and here we will choose MAI anime instance and create it M B P underscore M A I and A I and M instance. Press enter. So if you will click right and check for speed, so we will have this variable as we have created in blueprint uh, C plus plus class. So this is good. Okay, we need to create one blend space too. So right click, check this right click create blend space and we just need 1d and blend space underscore local motion and I will shift this under the animation uh, but okay let me delete this I created it just to check something so this is the blend space so I will move it to our folder because this is the uh, folder which came uh, with the asset so let me search where is that uh, okay this is here let me uh, check so this is this this will be the speed uh, which we go from 0 to 100 uh, we can tweak that later too uh, but the speed will be the name of the horizontal exit and it will go from 0 to 300 of I think 230 is the walk speed so maybe 600 or 500 something will be good and from 0 it will be the idle so third person idle idle and for the speed okay uh, so here's the trick first to get the exact speed like uh, what is the speed of walk or run how you will calculate that so what we will do first is like here uh, in the detail section go to the character bones and enable all hierarchy and what we will do so this this uh, bone location we will uh, take it as reference you can take any but I will choose this one uh, the hotel and it is started from here right and uh, okay so we will check for the Y okay and this is the world now so it goes from minus it, it goes like from minus 23 to so this is the stuff which it uh, took right so if uh, we will go from the north let me open the notepad so speed is equals to distance upon time right so we have to calculate the speed so before we need to calculate the uh, the distance and the time right so the distance uh, which it is covering right now so it is growing from minus 23 to so this is the max uh, which is taking so it is from minus 23 to 70 so let me open the calculator so it will be 70 minus 23 right so it uh, covers 47 unit 47 unit and the time it took is like so it is 30 frames per second if I'm not wrong yep Two. yes so the time it is taking it it took uh, in 8 okay and the frame rate it is like 30 fps it is right uh, it is written here it, which is 29 so what we will do the distance upon time time will be like 8 upon like uh, upon 29 so 29 will go up so it will be like 29 
if you are not getting it let me show it in your paint so speed equals to distance upon time right upon time distance was 47 and time was actually 8 upon 29 second right like because it is 8th right out of 30 out of 29 so 8 upon 29 so it will be like this sorry 29 so if we will calculate it so calculator 47 into 29 upon 8 so 170 uh, will be the approx value so what we will do in the BS locomotion for the walk we'll put it and uh, the value was what was the value again let me calculate it again 47 into 29 divided by 8 170 so put it 170 170 same we will do the drill for the run so by default if we'll check that foot first make that foot uh, let's check it with this one right now right now uh, it is here so by default it is zero okay let's change it to the world so it is minus 14 right and minus 14 to 70 80 around it is going so minus 70 right 17 10 or something like you can minus 10 so it will be 70 again uh, you can use the same calculation with my notepad come on so it is 70 distance it is covering 70 upon time time it took like from 7 to 7 to 12 which is approx 5 7 to 12 5 upon 29 it is 28.3 fps 0.3 fps so let me calculate the calculator 70 into 28.9 divided by 5 400 so this is the speed so again go back to the locomotion drop it here and it will be the 400 and we will set the max speed to 400 so uh, this will do the task let me play this, okay this is walk and this is the run okay perfect and what we will do we will put this here let me plug and play the blend space here and we will get speed and connect it here okay character bones let me turn this off mm, this is good let me plug and play that value and bp underscore m ai enemy instance select compile and save let okay uh, one more thing the blend space we have created let's move it to our folder animations move here okay I think we are done so right click kick and simulate it okay this is looking fine uh, okay I think we should took a break here as it is already 24 minutes uh, you must have learned something today uh, if you don't find like if you find it helpful just give me thumbs up or you can comment me below if you are unable to follow just let me know like what were the things I will try my best uh, to sort this out as soon as possible thank you and have a nice day
that it is going to hurt a company like Indigo Paints the most because Indigo Paints right now is a fairly small unit and a big company like Rasen enters into the space. Maybe it will not hurt Asian Paints as aggressively as it would hurt a high growth company like Indigo Paints. All these are valid concerns and because of this, the Indigo Paints stock price has corrected. One final point here is that Indigo Paints valuations were very aggressive, so they have already been crushed by 60-70 percent as I showed you the graph, and maybe they will correct a little bit more. Now, to what point they will fall? Neither I know it, neither any analyst knows it. Everyone keeps on giving their commentary that you know what this stock is going to fall to this particular level. No one can estimate that. I am being very very honest, candid with you. So here, the first key point that we need to understand is about the growth rate of the paints industry. So the growth rate of paints industry is not very attractive. So it is growing at roughly three percent. So that is half the growth rate at which the Indian economy is growing. So this industry as a whole is considered to be a slow growth industry. So you say that yeah, slow growth industry. Grasses is also entering. Competition is increasing. So what's the point? Okay. So the point is that the paints companies are smart. For example, consider the case study of Asian Paints. What Asian Paints is doing is that they are entering the home decor market. So this is an entirely new space that they have opened up for themselves. And it is not like a business which is completely different from the paints business. So if Asian Paints is selling you or I paints to paint our house, they can also sell us home furnishing products if the brand value is good. Indigo Paints right now is not doing that as per my understanding. But in the future, nothing stops them from entering these type of industries as well. So this is first key point. The second key and the most important point here is the pricing power point. So take a look at this particular snippet and what you will notice. And this is a statement that I picked from the MD of Asian Paints. And he categorically said that you know what, last year we increased our paint price by roughly 20 to 22 percent. Now this is a fairly substantial jump. So think about it this way that even if the industry saturates, it does not prove fully similar number of people are buying paints. Okay. But what if you can increase the price of that product by 20 to 25 percent? Then yes, then maybe the number will remain the same, but the overall value of the industry will go up. So Asian Paints is doing it, then it is very likely that then going forward in the future, Indigo Paints is also going to do something similar. Now comes the third, and the most important part is that the real estate development is slowing down. Does it mean that the real estate in the back sector will rest? Probably topic for another video altogether. But right now what is happening is that builders are not taking loans and constructing more buildings or houses. So therefore you will see an escalation in the rentals that you are paying, etc. etc. And how does this impact the paint industry? Well, it impacts the paint industry a lot because if new houses are not being constructed, then how are you going to paint them? So this is one of the key reasons why the paint industry stock is falling. But having said this, if you look at the capacity and expansion of any of these companies, they are all expanding their capacity. So what does this mean? It simply means that the real estate cycle is highly cyclical. It takes time, it goes through a cycle, and every now and then there will be boom and burst cycle in the real estate economy. So as a result, since the burst cycle of real estate is already over, it is very likely that the paint industry will also go up with the real estate cycle. So this is where I will stop the fundamental analysis of this stock and I will present a very quick snippet about the technicals of this stock and to what levels do I think that this stock can rise. Now if you take a look at this particular graphic, you will see that this is a very important channel for the stock and it usually trades horizontally in this channel. So therefore it is very likely that this stock is going to re-enter this channel as soon as there is a little bit of positive momentum in the market and therefore I see a growth of 30% on this stock. What about Asian Pains? I'll give commentary tomorrow on Asian Pains stock on the Kimber community. So now let's move on to the second stock which is Relaxo. The moment I say Relaxo, you would think about Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee because he has given a lot of commentary on Relaxo stock but unfortunately he has sold that stock now. So he is bearish about the stock. What about me? Am I bearish or bullish? So I am bullish about Relaxo. Now you say that you know more stuff than Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee. No, I don't know it but I'm putting my own money so I'm very much entitled to have my opinions and that is what I'm simply presenting. If you choose to believe it, you can choose to ignore it. I'm presenting my analysis. You can feel free to watch it. You'll get a contrary viewpoint and if you like it, you could probably investigate more and build your own positions and use your own brain around. So here is what Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee had to say on Relaxo issue as to why he sold it. So his viewpoint was that hey, the company is losing market share in two footwear categories. One is open footwear and other is sports shoe. So for people who do not know, sports shoe brand is Park Cycling and this is the high end stuff right that Relaxo sells and the open footwear is the low end stuff that Relaxo sells. Right? So this is where the story is with Mr. Mukherjee. He's simply saying that you know what, Relaxo losing market share and dumping the share more. Now again, I'm not trying to start a debate here. I'm just trying to present the entire viewpoint that there are some stocks that Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee has been incorrect about. For example, ITC. I took a contrary bid than him. I made a lot of money. He sold it at 200, 210, something like this. Second key stock, he cut HDMC, AMC quite early and when it was literally like at the bottom. Now it has recovered quite aggressively since then. Now I'm still holding HDMC, AMC and again, there are like a bunch of stocks that I can speak about, but that is not the agenda of the video. I'm simply trying to outline the fact that Mr. Mukherjee can also be wrong about stocks. I can also be wrong about the stock. Each of us have our own investment thesis and we are putting our money behind that. Just to help you understand the entire picture, I gave examples. Mr. Saurabh Mukherjee is a very nice person. He came on the channel also. In case you want to check that chat, you can go ahead and check it. I love his investing style. So with that viewpoint in mind, let us not try to create any controversy and more. So an interesting conversation that I found was of Mr. Dubak. He is the lead promoter of Relaxo and he made some very valid points which to me as a shareholder looked sensible. So I'll just quickly discuss that. So the first key point that Mr. Dubak explained about was that see, our business is highly cost competitive business, especially the jumpers that we are selling. We have to compete at a very low price point because we are trying to compete with a price sensitive market. So these will be tier two, tier three cities, towns, villages. So this is where Relaxo stuff gets sold and whom are they competing against? They are competing against the unorganized sector. Now due to the disruption in the supply chain, and he gave a very important example about an input cost material called as ethyl vinyl acetate. So Relaxo roughly uses 1000 ton of ethyl vinyl acetate every single month. So this is very large quantity. And over the last few quarters, the price volatility of this material was very, very high. For example, before COVID, the price per ton was roughly 120 rupees. Then post COVID, it rose to somewhere around 300 rupees. And then it came down to 200 rupees. Now, a company like Relaxo needs a longer supply chain. So they have to order this stuff well. 